guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I'm going to talk about my favorite poetry for the month of March. And I have quite a lot this month. I am so excited to have found such amazing poems and just quotes and beautiful things. And I say this every month and I just, I love when I find things like this. And I kind of had this thought like, you know, five years from now, I can go back and say, wow, those were, you know, the things that meant so much to me. And I don't know, I just had one of those moments. But I'm going to get into the reading of the poetry and stuff because I have quite a lot. And I'm just, I'm so excited about this. So let's go. There are two types of people you'll meet in your life. One will run a finger down the index of who you are and jump straight to the parts of you that pique their interest. The other will take his or her time reading through every page of your chapters and maybe fold the corners of you that inspire them most. You will meet these two people. It is a given. It is the third you'll never see coming. That one person who not only finishes your sentences, but keeps the book. That's anonymous. I thought that was just really sweet. This is one of my all time just, oh, this is one I will remember for a long time. I know it. We can't hate ourselves into a version of ourselves we can love by Laurie Dishoon. I think this is really just crazy important, especially for college students to hear. It turns out procrastination is not typically a function of laziness, apathy, or work ethic as it is often regarded to be. It's a neurotic self-defense behavior that develops to protect a person's sense of self-worth. You see, procrastinators tend to believe who have, for whatever reason, developed to perceive an unusually strong association between their performance and their value as a person. This makes failure or criticism disproportionately painful, which leads naturally to hesitancy when it comes to the prospect of doing anything that reflects their ability, which is pretty much everything. My heart is a thousand years old. I am not like other people. Charles Bukowski. Like, I, I seriously do. I feel like I am just not at that same place as a lot of people. This is specifically from Tumblr, and this is via Unpoetic Heartbreak. I will have their Tumblr linked in the description, but it's from the For Him series number two. My parents warned me about the drugs in the streets, but never the ones with hazel eyes and a heartbeat. I'd rather be a failure at something I love than a success at something I hate. George Burns. I am a collection of dismantled almosts. and Sexton. One of my favorite just short little oh, it's just so beautiful i give a fuck i give lots of fucks actually i'm a prostitute of feelings by unknown i see you in colors that don't exist by paul Mat Mat matimoso Mat 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 matusomoto let's just have 500 clips of me trying to say that name guilt was acid in our veins it corroded everything our heart, our lungs, our throat. Once we were by Kat Xong, Z-H-A-N-G. I'm really sorry about that pronunciation. That one was a bad one. But isn't just that just so powerful? You are under no obligation to be the same person you were five minutes ago, unknown. I, so important. I feel as if I am an ad for the sale of a haunted house. 18 rooms, $37,000, I'm yours ghosts and all, which you're brought in. Things aren't all so tangible and sayable as people would usually have us believe. Most experiences are unsayable. They happen in a place that no word has ever entered, and more unsayable than all other things are works of art, those mysterious existences whose life endures beside our own transitory life. Rainier Maria Rilke, by, it's in Letters to a Young Poet, but I'm sure I will just continue to butcher that poor man's name. It's Hungarian, so pronunciation. But I'm gonna quote quite a couple from that, so let's just watch Hannah Butcher it a couple more times. This is a little bit long, but sit with me, I swear it is so worth it. To give you a short little preface to this, this is a poet writing to another man who is a poet, and he's, the poet that is more well known is giving this poet that is not known advice. You ask whether your verses are any good. You ask me. You have asked others before this. You send them to magazines. You compare them with other poems, and you are upset when certain editors reject your work. Since you have said you want my advice, I beg you to stop doing that sort of thing. You are looking outside, and that is what you should most avoid right now. No one can advise or help you. No one. There is only one thing you should do. Go into yourself. Find out the reason that commands you to write. See whether it has spread its roots into the very depths of your heart. Confess to yourself whether you would have to die if you were forbidden to write. This most of all, 
Ask yourself in the most silent hour of the night, must I write? Dig into yourself for a deep answer. And if this answer rings out in assent, if you meet the solemn question with the strong and simple, I must, then build your life in accordance with this necessity, your whole life, even into its humblest and most indifferent hour, must become a sign and witness to this impulse. And this is another piece, just this one's not quite as long. You are so young, so much before all beginning, and I would like you, dear sir, as well as I can, to have patience with everything unresolved in your heart, and to try to love the questions themselves, as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers, which could not be given to you now, because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday far in the future, you will gradually, even without noticing it, live your way into the answer. This book and this particular edition, uh, with, it's translated and with a foreword by Stephen Mitchell. I actually went through Barnes and Noble and I looked through different um, translated versions. I still do prefer this the best. Megan and I both do. So that's all I have in the way of quotes this month. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this and if there are any poets that you would like to recommend to me, give it to me, please. Okay, please, I love me some poetry. I'm really into slam poetry too, if you're not familiar with that. I have a couple months back of like old month favorites of poetry and stuff. I also have a couple just like videos dedicated to where I'm talking about poetry and then I have one dedicated, I'm pretty sure just to slam poetry. So, I mean, I talk about poetry a lot. So that's kind of one of my things that I try to incorporate into this channel. It's not quite as well received, but I like doing it and I'm going to continue to keep doing it. So, I mean, those of you who do like this, I'm glad that you do like it. But I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. I don't know what book I'm going to be reading next. I know as far as poetry, I will be getting that Letters to a Young Poet one up next. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. Bye.